Dang, bro, the Bonatarsky paradox is actually his most popular because this is minefield. This is not his most popular video is his most confusing video. I guess it makes sense. People are going back through and watching it over and over again. It's crazy though. Does it does um yeah, this doesn't have nearly as many views, which is about as complicated, I feel like. I don't remember what the hell he even talked about in this video, but okay, I guess it starts right here with this and then I remember this be video being good, but I don't even remember what's in it. This is like a series. It's like three videos right here. Bonatarsky Paradox, Super Tasks, and How to Count Past Infinity. I feel like if you watch one, you gotta watch all three in sequence because they, they go hand in hand. And maybe watch these two first and then the Bonatarsky Paradox. Hey Vsauce, Michael here. There's a famous way to seemingly create chocolate out of nothing. Maybe you've seen it before. This chocolate bar is four squares by eight squares. But if you cut it like this, and then like this, and finally like this, you can rearrange the pieces like so. This is a good looking chocolate bar. With the same four by eight bar, but with a leftover piece apparently created out of thin. It's crazy because it's like, it's so blatant. When you know the trick, it's so blatantly obvious. So there's one, two, three, four, like indents, right? And this is like not a full one, but over here, you look at this one, okay? This is not a full indent. This is like a little less, this is like a half in it of an indent. It technically should be precisely a half, but it looks like it's a little bit less than a half. Maybe just the angle. Arrange the pieces like so. And There's four indents. With the same. Oh, look at that. There's a little less now, a little less. Four by eight bar, but with a leftover piece apparently created out of thin air. This is a popular and that the part on the right looks really good. That looks pretty solid, but it's slightly shorter on the top right. Animation of this illusion as well. I call it dang. That's crazy. Look at this part right here. Watch this part. This part. It just grows. Just that fake. In reality, the final bar is a bit smaller. It contains this much less chocolate. Each square along the cut is shorter than it was in the original, but the cut makes it difficult to notice right away. The animation is extra misleading because Dang. it to look at its deception. This the lost height of like, each square is surreptitiously added in. How much it grows it moves to make it hard to notice. I mean, come on. Obviously, you cannot cut up a chocolate bar and rearrange the pieces into more than you started with. Or can you? One of the strangest theorems in modern mathematics is the Banach Tarski paradox. It proves that there is, in fact, a way to take an object and separate it into five different pieces. Isn't that illegal? Defacing a currency? Then, with those five pieces, simply rearrange them, no stretching required, into two exact copies of the original item. Same density, same size, same everything. Seriously, to dive into the mind blow that it is and the way it fundamentally questions math and ourselves, we have to start by asking a few questions. First, what is infinity? A number? I mean, it's nowhere on the number line. But we often right, yeah, a little, a little. This is the same animation he used for the How to Count Past Infinity video. I feel like watching that one and then watching this one would be better. It's like, there's an infinite number of blah, blah, blah. And as far as we know, infinity could be real. The universe may be infinite in size and flat, extending out forever and ever. That's crazy how that's the only example we could have that infinity could be real. Nothing else even falls within uh, 52 factorial. So it's like, maybe there is other things. I genuinely can't think of any other instance where people will go like, okay, infinity might be real theoretically in this, it's only with the size of the universe. Without end, beyond even the part we can't observe or ever hope to observe. That's exactly what infinity is. Not a number per se, but rather a size. The size of something that doesn't end. You could, I don't like to think about it as a size. I like to think about it as a set. 
or a sequence. Infinity is not the biggest number. Instead, it is how many numbers there are. Yeah. But there are different sizes of infinity. The smallest type of infinity is countable infinity. Dang, he said there are different sizes of infinity with such like a, like he didn't have like a dun or whatever. Like he just, he's burning through this shit. Like they throw you in the deep end in this video. Of hours in forever. It's also the number of whole that there are. It's also the amount of seconds there are in forever and milliseconds there are in forever and millennia there are in forever. It's all the same number. Natural numbers, the numbers we use when counting things like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Sets like these are unending, but they are countable. Countable means that you can count them from one element to any other in a finite amount of time even if that finite amount of time is longer than you will live or the universe will exist for, it's still finite. Uncountable infinity, on the other hand, is literally bigger, too big to even count. The number of real numbers- See, I don't like bigger. I, I, uncountable infinity is denser. Uncountable infinity is a different kind of sequence. It's not too big to count because it can be incredibly small. Or not, it can be, you can, I guess it's not incredibly small, but you can stop uncountable infinity at any, at, at one, from zero to one, there's an uncountable infinity in there. So it's, I just don't like the words bigger or smaller for them. I like, okay, fine. That's the best words I could think of. That there are, not just whole numbers, but all numbers is uncountably infinite. You this was super fascinating. When I learned about this, this was when I was like still happy with like math and science and all that stuff. And when it didn't like piss me off. Learning this, I was like, oh man, how, what a beautiful way of looking at it. Because it's all the fractions. And you can think about exhausting infinity, right? Zeno's paradox. That's really where all the issues come with infinity. It's infinite, never ending. Okay, the world is simple. You're a little kid. That's all you think about. But then when you realize that you can exhaust infinity, by placing in an infinite set or whatever, that's when things get get interesting and complicated. And you think to yourself like, okay, one over one, one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five, I'm exhausting this. And you you burn through every infinity in a Zeno paradox mental style. I don't, I only do math mentally and I only do it in a, in a visual, visual mental way. So it's really hard for me to actually describe it like with like the vocab words or whatever. Like I'm describing it as if, as in like, a person running, you know? So you've exhausted that infinity. So is that infinity bigger or smaller than the infinity of every single exhaustible one over the every denominator, two over every denominator, three over every denominator? And how the hell can you manage to say that that's a countable infinity if you can continuously, um, like if, if you can exhaust one and there is still more numbers left over. It's, it's not necessarily about the, how do I describe it? It's not about if you can exhaust those numbers. It's about if it's possible, if there is a way, if there's a method to match up in a sequence, all the other numbers as well. It's fuzzy and it's, it's abstract math. It's all, it's all like bullshit. It's not shit that you could write on paper. So it's really, really fun to think about this kind of stuff. Count even from zero to one in a finite amount of time by naming every real number in between. I mean, where do you even start? Zero, okay. I also don't like the word real numbers. I don't like the word real numbers for this case. Like, you know how there's like integers or cardinal numbers or like there's all these different words for these things, right? Like give this a different kind of thing. The real numbers, numbers that can be expressed as a fraction and then irrational numbers. And that's all real numbers. So it's like this, give it a different name because irrational numbers are not real numbers. Like in the real world, real is like mathematicians got to realize their shit, like their entire endeavor is a race to see how much useless shit you can think of. If you think about it, like dimensionless points, infinitesimals don't exist in the real world because the, the core understanding of arithmetic and zeros conflicts with its existence, contradicts it. If you can take an infinitesimal 
number and add it to itself enough times to where it actually equals any kind of value at all that is not zero. If an infinitesimal is different from zero, then wouldn't wouldn't we be able to divide by zero then? I'm not saying irrational numbers don't exist in that there are mathematical constants and concepts and things like that, like pi. But I'm saying in the real world, in, in what we can interact with, we will never encounter an irrational number of items. We can encounter an irrational proclivity of the universe, right? A discovery, but a, a number, an interaction, uh, something that exists in the real world, something that's not just an irrational kind of um, probability or whatever, but, but it's within our universe, tangible, will never be irrational. It's, it's very simple. There's never going to be a perfect circle. You will never, ever, no matter how much you try, be able to draw a perfect circle. And I feel like infinitesimal, the understanding of infinitesimals and irrationals goes hand in hand if you're a kid that's interested in math. You know, you think of them as like very, very similar because the ending of an irrational number, which isn't even like a right sentence to say, but if you were to say that, it would end with an infinitesimal. It's like this, it's like this. Let's say we visualize it like we take a circle and you peel off the edge of that circle and you turn it into a spiral. However, that edge that you peel off is an infinitesimally small piece. So you make a thread, right? You make a thread and it's infinitesimally small. The question is not, does the string ever end? The string doesn't end, okay? That's reasonable. Countable infinity proves that too. The string is never ending. It goes on forever. The question is, does that circle ever even get any smaller when you're pulling this string out? Can you create matter? Because that's what that is, right? Fuck the Bonatarsky paradox. If you're able to pull that out and add it into itself and actually create a whole, use infinitesimals to add it to itself to create a whole other circle, You've created matter from nothing because an infinitesimal cannot take anything from that circle. If it is, then it's not zero. And then there's all this like um, Hilbert's hotel kind of stuff where it's like the, the amount of like rooms that are filled up could be going up and up and up and up and up. But then once the sequence ends, it's completely empty. You can ask a, a, another question, which is, does that, does that actually, that string, that spiral, does it actually have any width? Where maybe you can assume it is appearing to have more and more mass because the sequence the the infinity has not been exhausted yet it's appearing that the end circle that you make the spiral out of will have more and more and more mass right and so you take that spiral you make it into another circle ship of theseus right however once you combine it it's completely massless and it ceases to exist so it, it's it's weird and and tricky to think about and it's weird to visualize another question would be if it's not taking anything from that circle is there a different kind of mathematics that you would need to then actually take an infinitesimal, infinitesimally small width and peel that off of the edges of a circle where it actually does exhaust that circle? And uh, um, I just made up this visualization off the top of my head just now. So I don't know if anybody's ever thought about if there is a way to do that. Or if it would in general, if it would. And I'm just completely wrong that it wouldn't. And the reason why I say that it's not is here's another way to visualize it. Imagine it's, it's a sphere. You know, in Minecraft, when people way back in the day, they used to make like the TNT balls and they just make them bigger and bigger and bigger. If you try to make a sphere in Minecraft, you zoom in, eventually you will see the squares and you can make it bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually try to make it so that from a distance, it looks as smooth as possible. And it really does look like a sphere and just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. And the more that you add to it, the more that you zoom out and, and keep it from the same perspective, the smaller and smaller the ridges and bumps will be on that sphere, but it will always be there. It will never ever go away. The mathematics of the, the, the Java code of Minecraft doesn't allow you to create a sphere. And so if we put those kinds of rules like in our universe, right? Let's say that that's what we're doing. If an infinitesimally small point could in any mathematics that we have actually take away any matter from that circle. That means that there would reach a point. Eventually there would reach a point where those squares would become a circle. And I think simply due to the fact that pi is irrational is proof in our own universe that infinity doesn't exist that the universe which is our only example of anything that could possibly potentially be infinite 
isn't actually infinite. That's just how that's just how I intuit that because I played Minecraft. But what comes next? Zero point zero 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 zero. Eventually, we would imagine a. Yeah, yeah. So in in this case, the way I'm intuiting it is that. In order to create, let's say we don't have a sphere, we want to create the sphere. Okay, where do we begin? Do we place down a square? Well, that's not possible to create a perfect sphere. You cannot do that. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work because then you're rejecting the idea that you are truly zooming all the way out into infinity and creating an infinitely large sphere. The moment you decide to, to place even a single square, you've admitted it cannot be a perfect sphere. It will have the bumps. And so there's no way to start. And going somewhere at the end, but there is no end. We could always add another zero. Uncountability makes this set so much larger than the set of all whole numbers that even between zero and one, mm -hmm. there are more numbers than there are. I wouldn't say it's larger. I would, ex I would say the set exists outside of the dimension of our infinity. Look, mathematicians much smarter than me imagine uncountable infinity to be larger than countable infinity. But I think there's value in these unique kind of perspectives because I've never heard anyone say that they, they could be the same size. Maybe that's an interesting perspective worth having that might lead someone to the to a new kind of paradigm shift. Who knows? Whole numbers on the entire endless number line. Gero Cantor's famous diagonal argument helps illustrate. I love this, dude. This is what I was talking about when I said I was like into when when I was into math and science, and I was like, this was like a really beautiful thing. This I thought was stunning. Listing every number between zero and one, since they are uncountable and can't be listed in order, let's imagine randomly generating them forever with no repeats. Each number we generate can be paired with a whole number. If there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two, that is, if we can match one whole number to each real number on our list, that would mean that countable and uncountable sets are the same size. But we can't do that. Even though this list goes on forever, forever isn't enough. Watch this. If we go diagonally down our endless list of real numbers and take the first decimal of the... I would say if you've never seen this before, you might have to watch this part a couple times over because that's what I had to do when I first... I, I don't know where I first learned this. It might have been on Minute Physics, maybe. I remember it's just like this because everyone does it the same sort of way. Um, but it took up the whole page. It might have been on number file, but I don't think they made that video that long ago. But yeah, this is also, cause when you're a kid and, and you're like, what? There's no way, it can't be like this. You come up with all these different rationalizations and it's, it's nostalgic to see this because I'm like, wait, but I've created the new number in the sequence, but can't I just, can't I just Hilbert Hotel, Hilbert Hotel my way into going like, ah, oh, just shift every number up one, you know? Something like that to like keep it going. But again, saying it's larger, is, I mean, an understatement, but it's not even an understatement. It's just a wrong, it just doesn't make sense. They're not on the same scale. It's it's like it, you're going realizing that you can't pair them. It's not possible. It doesn't work. Number and the second of the second number, the third of the third and so on, and add one to each, subtracting one, if it happens to be a nine, we can generate a new real number that is obviously between zero and one, but since we've defined it to be different from- Yeah, yeah, right, right. That's the word. You defined it. So it's about the definitions of these things. Uncountable infinity, countable infinity, who knows if any of them exists, but somehow we've managed to define two different infinities. That's all it is. Number on our endless list in at least one place, it's clearly not contained in the list. In other words, we've used up every single whole number, the entire infinity of them, and yet we can still come up with more real. Right, but can't we just, um, can't we just like, and add another fraction to the end, you know? And then, and then keep it going, and then keep it going, and keep it going, but eventually we run out. Or, or would we? Numbers. Here's something else that is true, but counterintuitive. There are the same number of even numbers as there are even and odd numbers. At first, that's- That's so, bro, why would he say this now? 
after all this, after all this, like, like, I feel like if you understand these, the concepts that he's already explained, this is not counterintuitive anymore. It's counterintuitive for your kid. You haven't seen this any, before. At least I think it is. I don't even remember what that feels like. This is not counterintuitive to me. This is intuitive to me. This I understand completely. I assume the same amount of, of all the fractions that could exist ever, positive and negative, as there are prime numbers. And, and nothing feels weird about that anymore. I think it did at one point. I literally just don't remember what it felt like. But I think I would have had to have been a fucking monster if, if this didn't feel weird and unintuitive. But, but why are you putting it in the video now? You should have done it earlier. Ridiculous. Clearly, there are only half as many even numbers as all whole numbers. But that intuition is wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is why it, it, it relates heavily infinities and infinitesimals and all that stuff relates with dividing by zero. It's why the first intuition when you say, what's something divided by zero? Well, it's infinity. Well, I think you might have to specify. It's uncountable infinity. But then you have to ask yourself, is there an infinite number of infinities? And I'm gonna say infinite number. But then because it's an uncountable infinity, then you have to ask yourself, is there an uncountably infinite number of, like, si of different sizes of infinities? Because everything can be divided by zero? Because you can say one divided by zero is infinity. Two divided by zero is also infinity. So one equals two. In a way you can say that that's true. In the same way you can say infinity equals negative one or infinity, like an infinite sequence is one over one twelfth or whatever, you know? And you can make up this fucking bullshit because this is one, two, one, four, two, six, three, eight, four. And you could say one equals two, because when you add up a bunch of ones and you add up a bunch of twos, you end up with the same number. So if infinity exists, dividing by zero should work. It shouldn't throw an error. Something else should happen. Of all whole numbers is denser, but every even number can be matched with a whole number. You will never run out of- Right, right, right. So that's what it is. It's the density and, and you, can, you can change densities. I like to think about this number line stuff as like topology. Like you can take a, a, a sphere and morph it into a, you know, a oloid or like a, or an ellipse. I, people don't know what a fucking oloid is or like a dumbbell shape or a cylinder or, you know, all this like a blob, a Nickelodeon blob, whatever. And I believe it's topology, but from a topology perspective, they're not separate uh, shapes when you're doing these kinds of thought experiments. And so this is not a separate shape or like a separate sequence or a separate set. The difference between countable infinity and uncountable infinity is they're just different sets. They're a different shape physically. They're set. So this one-to-one -one correspondence shows that both sets are the same size. In other words, infinity divided by two is still infinity. Uh -huh. Infinity plus one is also infinity a good illustration of man i love that game you know when you're a kid and, and you're like arguing with your brother or some some other kid and you're like you're just trying to say the highest number like it's that childish like luffy mentality where he's like i'll have i uh, give me give me 50 of these drinks uh give me 51 of these cherry pies give me 52 of these drinks and you just and you just keep going up and up and up a number it's it's like big number equals better like very primal very like childish where you're arguing with your brother like i bet you i could say a bigger number than you even though you don't say that you just say the bigger number and you just sort of have an understanding that whoever says the biggest number wins and then someone says infinity and it's like okay it's either game over or infinity plus one and then you go infinity plus infinity and then at, at some point you got to realize that uh shit bro infinity plus infinity minus infinity divided by infinity or maybe not divided by infinity but times infinity well, be divided by a certain kind of infinity, maybe, but plus a uh, Google Plex minus uh, and all, all this stuff, it's still infinity. Just like how if you were to warp the sphere into this shape and that shape and that shape without creating any tears or cuts or whatever is still that, that same shape, maybe. From a, from a topological perspective, not like a geometric perspective. Is Hilbert's paradox of the Grand Hotel. Imagine a hotel with a countably infinite number of rooms. Damn, the music. Imagine that there is a person booked into every single room. 
Seemingly, it's fully booked, right? No. Infinite sets go against common sense. Well, yeah, you can say right. You can say yes. You don't have to say no. He's saying no for shock factor. It is fully booked. But the moment you decide it's not fully booked anymore, then it's not fully booked. But it is, it, it, you, you can say it's fully booked and that's not a wrong statement. You see, if a new guest shows up and wants a room, all the hotel has to do is move the guest in room number one to room number two. So now it's not fully booked anymore. But I mean, it's, it's shock factor, but like, yeah, yeah. And the guest in room two to room three and three to four and four to five and so on, because the number of rooms is never ending, we cannot run out of rooms. Mm -hmm. Infinity minus one is also infinity again. If one guest leaves the hotel, we can shift every guest the other way. Guest two goes to room one, three to two, four to three, and so on. It's actually kind of scary to, to think about it like this, because when you think about it like this, you, you imagine a sequence that has an end and that the last person, there will be a last person that has to move to the thing and then there will be an empty space. But the fact that it doesn't end means that it will never happen. So when you apply infinity with the size of the universe, it's up in the air as to whether or not infinity exists. When you apply infinity to a time constraint, it becomes clear that infinity logically cannot exist. Or maybe not logically, logically is not the right word for it. But there are there is a perspective that you can put your mind into that makes you go, oh shit, it can't happen. There is no infinities in the universe. And so that's why I'm inclined to go, there's um, consistency here. And just like how there will probably be an end to time, big rip, big uh, you know expansion, heat death, whatever the hell you wanna call it, whatever it's gonna end up being, that there will also be an end to space as well. Everything evaporates into virtual particles and black holes, and then those black holes eventually evaporate into virtual particles. Whatever it might be, there will be an end to time, and if there's an end to time, there's an end to space. And if there's a reasonable end to space, then space cannot be infinite in size. Because in our universe, it doesn't make sense for there to be marginal decreases in, in the size of space, or increases in the size of space, or whatever the hell it is, and for it to result in an infinite amount of anything. It needs to be finite. Amount of guests, that is a never ending supply of them, no room, will be left empty. As it turns out, you can subtract any finite number from infinity and still be left with infinity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't care. It's unending. Banat Tarski hasn't left our sights yet. All of this is related. We are now ready to move on to shapes. Hilbert's hotel can be applied to a circle. Wait, did I just create my own version of the Banat Tarski paradox with that, the spiral? Because doesn't the Bonatarsky paradox rely on being able to make dimensionless points on a sphere? You say this is a dimensionless point and we're going to take this point and drag it over here, ship of Theseus, and we're going to take this and reorder it and rearrange it to make a new sphere. But that's contingent on the fact that dimensionless point exists, which is also the same thing as my thought experiment saying contingent on the fact that this infinitesimally small 0 0.00 repeating one in length of any unit string actually has any mass at all, which if it, which if it does have mass, then isn't it kind of the same paradox? Points around the circumference can be thought of as guests. If we remove one point from the circle. Okay, so he's removing a chunk. Okay, so maybe, maybe this is, oh wait, maybe he did all that to describe the difference between what if Banaktarsky is a countable infinity way of doing this? That's interesting. Even though that's not like, if I really, really put my mind to it, I might be able to think of another way to do it that doesn't revolve around all this like crazy bullshit. But maybe they do all this crazy bullshit because that's like, that's like their proof of showing that in a countable infinity universe, where a countable infinity exists, that a sphere exists like this, which I don't think, I think... Uh, uh, the fact that pi is irrational is a way of the universe sort of uh, telling us like, yeah, no, this is not a countable infinity. You cannot apply a countable infinity to a sphere and you and take a countable piece out of it because you can always just take 
a point from here and put it there and a point from here and put it there and a point from here and put it there and eventually fill it back up. But would that even work? Would that even work? Because you're taking dimensionless points out. And that's why I say dimensionless points don't exist. It's gone, right? Infinity tells us it doesn't matter. The circumference of a circle is irrational. It's the radius times two mm -hmm. pi. So if we mark off points beginning from the hole, every radius length along the circumference going clockwise, we will never land on the same point. Right, 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 right. That, that, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. You can go through and exhaust infinity, exhaust a countably infinite amount of countable infinities, and still you will be able to continue to go around the circle and you will not only have more spots to land on, more points to land on, unless you're being intentional about landing on a specific point that you've already landed on, mathematically speaking, I believe you will never ever land on the same point twice. Twice. Ever. Yeah, you just said that. Each point we mark with a whole number. So this set is never ending, but countable, just like guests in rooms in Hilbert's hotel. And like those guests- Wait, 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 it's not countable because you can exhaust it, but because of the nature of irrational point, because you're not taking uh, chunks or pieces, like you're not, um trying to split it into fractions and fractions and fractions. If it's, if you're, all you're doing is marking a point, that's an infinitesimal point that you're doing, right? That is, that's what it is. What Vsauce just said, what Michael just said is marking down enough infinitesimally small points. If you do it enough, you can eventually get re like an integer, whole number, whatever, a fraction, anything like that, because there is some mass in a dimensionless point. That's what I feel like that's what he's saying. Let me hear that again. Let me hear that again. The whole number. So this set is never ending, but countable, just like guests in rooms in Hilbert's hotel. That that makes no sense to me. How is this countable? I mean, yeah, you can technically count it like this, but saying that marking down all the dimensionless points on here is countable makes no sense to me because once you count it all with every form of countable infinity you can still continue to count you've exhausted it but you still have more points to go and you will never ever run out that's the nature of being able to infinitely zoom in it's the 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 reconciliation of algebra and arithmetic in regards to infinities combined with geometry in regards to infinities kind of relies on there to be this this mismatch I feel, I feel. Maybe I'm wrong. And that's actually really fascinating. If I'm wrong about this and Banach-Tarski, the paradox, is able to create matter from nothing with a countable infinity. But this is not a countable. Is it? Is it? Like, I'm so confused. Is this countable infinity? Because it feels like we just did this. It feels like we're applying an irrational number to every sequence, which isn't that what that is? Let's say we apply a distance, right? We have a point right here, we have a one right here, and then we apply a distance on every single one, and then we try to assign a single number, or not a single number. We try to, we, every single uncountable point on here, let's assume that some hyperdimensional being has created a list, a sequence of every single irrational point. And then we somehow manage to go around and say to ourselves, we're going to go through and exhaust every single integer, which is just countable infinity, you could do it with any, every single odd number, whatever, but we're gonna go through and apply every single integer because it's intuitive to us and it makes sense and it's just nice and clean. And we will exhaust every single point of this circle. Isn't that the same thing of what he just described as saying you cannot do that, that, that you cannot pair countable infinity with uncountable infinity, that it's it will never be enough no matter how much countable infinity you have. So how can Vsauce then, how can Michael then say that this is, that we can go through here and get every single point in a countable infinity? Because these are all irrational numbers. You're pairing integers with irrational numbers and then saying that you've managed to successfully pair it with every irrational number in a with a countable infinity. That just makes no sense to me. This is where I'm lost with this with this paradox. I feel like other people get lost at the um, at the part where they have all those like the, the cool visuals of all the points sticking out and all that stuff and, and reforming into a second thing. I've always wondered why, because I've watched this video I think twice and I never remembered how the paradox worked. I think this is why. 
because I've been able to reconcile other paradoxes in my head and even find some solutions to them. But I feel like the reason why why I was never able to remember why Bonatarsky worked in a way that I can explain it to other people. Because I've explained to other people other paradoxes, grandfather paradox and all that stuff. Everything from that to shit, I don't know. I mean, that's just the first one that comes to mind. Also, I don't like explaining other paradoxes to people. It's difficult to explain. I like the grandfather paradox because it goes hand in hand with the, with the one from Zelda where it's like Link learns a song of storms from the man who's working in the, uh, the windmill or whatever, right? And then he goes back in time puts a sword in, goes back in time to when he was a kid, seven years earlier, and teaches the Song of Storms to him. So where did the Song of Storms come from? There's a beautiful way to look at it, which is the universe just creates these things, and all the creations of the universe are ways of it continuing to allow itself to exist. It's like the creators of our simulation have run through simulation and said, all right, we're gonna add this so that way our computer doesn't crash. And we're gonna add this so that way, oh, but the computer's crashing like this. It's just a way of creating computer code ever fixing itself computer code, you know? A very, very sophisticated, intelligent design. It isn't, isn't that what they call God, the intelligent designer? It's just really poetic and beautiful. And, and I like thinking about that kind of thing. I, I love. Like when I explained to my mom the um, Zelda, like the link going back in time to teach the person who taught him the song and asking her like, that was such like a, like a mind fuck for her. And she's like, what? Well, you're like eight years old. How'd you think of this? And I was like, ooh, look at me, I'm so smart. So that's why I liked all this stuff because I got attention from it. I don't think I would like it if, if you know, I was actually like strong. The reason why I'm into this stuff, I'm not into it anymore. Cause I'm like doing shit with my life. Literally the only reason why I'm into math and science is because like when you're not athletic as a kid you kind of have to go down a path of going like well i can't do that so i want and i want girl attention from my image of female perfection whether it be from my mom or from the girls in school so either i make a fuck ton of money or i get into some crazy good like I, I do something else you know and so you gotta do something else so that's the only reason why i'm actually interested in this kind of stuff if i was athletic as a kid i don't think i would care about this honestly because genuinely i'm lost 40 million people have seen this maybe not 40 maybe like 20 million people have seen this twice and they've been able to see they're not confused here they're confused here they're confused here or no they like the visuals here uh they're confused here and, they're con and I thought they would be confused here as well. They're going back to order his book here. But look, nobody's confused here. I'm lost, I'm confused. Michael go go clinically insane and no one would know the difference. This is one of the best comments of that. Hey bro, I swear to God, the, the, the reason people ask me like, hey, why don't you ever go to therapy? I'm like, bro, they put me in a mental asylum. Like society would consider me mentally ill. And I'm, I just wanna let y'all know like, hey, I'm not a danger to society, bro. I just think a little different. guests even though one has checked out we can just shift the rest move them yeah counterclockwise and every room will be fit. but i don't think so with this case wait um there's some fuckery going on with what i explained earlier in hilbert hilbert's hotel where the very last person leaves the empty room that they were previously occupying and this it would make sense with this but like a countably infinitely large circle is taking a chunk from a circle a, oh wait maybe that is maybe the same thing you have a, a finite size circle here right you have a finite size circle is taking an infinitely t infinitesimally small point out from it the the same thing mathematically as taking any finite size chunk out of out of an infinitely large circle in the same way, you can subtract 10 from infinity and a million from infinity, and it's still infinity. It's still the same size because you can always take new pieces. Is that the same thing? Is that my, is that, is that the way to reconcile geometry of countable versus uncountable infinity? Because this works the same way as Hilbert's Hotel, but I feel like this is different from Hilbert's Hotel because I feel like you can't pair the integers with all of the points that are on a circle because they're all irrational. I mean, I guess some of them, but it's not even fair to say some of them because there's uncountably infinite more 
infinitely more irrational points on a circle than there are rational points. Point one moves to fill in the hole. Two fills in the place where point one used to Makes sense. But, but my issue is with the word point. And two, and so on. Since we have an unending supply of numbered points, no hole will be left unfilled. The missing point is forgotten. Yeah, but did he take a chunk out or did he take a point out? Because you can take points out and that's no problem. I've never, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that. In the same way, like in a, in a function, if there's a hole, at the end of the day, that doesn't fucking change the function, you know? It's still the same line. And, and you can, with an infinite series, fill that hole. We apparently never needed it to be complete. There's one last neato con- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is my issue. This is my issue. We never needed that to be complete. So we can take this out. We could do this indefinitely. We can do this infinitely and create an infinite amount of points. My question is this. Is this an infinitesimally small point? Or is this- Does this have any sort of mass at all? Or is it the same- Is this infinitesimally small point have mass? Because if it does, then yeah, you don't need to do all this other crazy shit to do by Noctarsky. You could just do this and create another sphere eventually. And you can create an infinite amount of spheres. If he's using this just as like a symbol to describe a singular point, then filling an infinitesimally small gap with an infinitesimally small area that you can point to to say that there is mass here in this area, that makes sense to me. It's a one-to-one, -one. that makes sense to me. Uncountable infinity can exhaust uncountable infinity. The sets and sequences can match up. But if you're saying that th you can take out a chunk of, of the circle here, and using points fill it up. Isn't that saying, isn't that the same thing as saying that these points, you add them up together enough, they will have mass. Therefore, the points themselves have mass, as small as they might be. Which is, which, that makes no sense to me. We apparently never needed it to be complete. Maybe these other mathematicians are right. Maybe they're thinking about it. I mean, not maybe, they are right. I understand why people say that uncountable infinity is bigger, bigger than just countable infinity. I was about to say normal infinity. But I like being drawn to the perspective that one's not bigger than the other, one just exists in a different dimension. And trying to take one and saying, oh, we're gonna take pieces from this sequence and apply it here and fill in holes in this sequence, that is where I'm lost. There's one last neato consequence of infinity we should discuss before tackling Bonoktarsky. Ian Stewart, famously proposed a brilliant dictionary, one that he called the hyperwebs. Oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was Dictionary of Babel, or like the Babel Dictionary. Isn't that the, what is that? Yeah, 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 the Library of Babel, that's what it is. The hyperwebster lists every single possible word of any length formed from the 26 letters in the English alphabet. The amount of potential sequences you can make with combinations of 26 letters is the same thing as the amount of potential sequences you can make with one letter. They're both countable infinity. A set of infinite A's is the same size as the set of infinite combinations of every letter because one times infinity is the same set as 26 times, in, as 26 times infinity, which also the, the library of Babel is the same thing as the Hyperwebster dictionary because every hex code, there's like 256, you know, the bits, right? So one times uh, infinity is the same thing as one uh, as 26 times infinity, which is the same thing as 256 times infinity for 256, uh, you know, like eight bit color spectrum or, uh, you know, the 16,384, whatever for uh, 16 bit color, you know, but it's all, it's all the same countable infinity set. It's monkeys on a typewriter. Begins with A, followed by AA, then AAA, then AAAA, and after an infinite number of those, AB. Right. Then ABA, then ABAA, ABAAA, and so on until Z. You know, the thing where it's like, if you take a bunch of monkeys and you give them an infinite amount of time, eventually they like to type on a typewriter, eventually they'll type up Hamlet. They did. That's how Hamlet was written. Eventually enough time passed and a bunch of monkeys typed up Hamlet. Z-A, Z-A-A, etc, etc, until the final entry, an infinite sequence of Z's. Such a dictionary 
would contain every single word. Mm -hmm. Okay? Every single thought, definition, description, truth, lie, name, story. What happened to Amelia Earhart would be in that dictionary, as well as every single thing that didn't happen to Amelia Earhart. Everything that could be said using our alphabet. And it's really cool because when you start diving into infinity and you get into the mindset, you start thinking to yourself like all these hypotheticals like, wait, would that dictionary, uh, uh, Hyper Webster or whatever, would it also include itself where it's like it's the dictionary in its entirety is its own set. At some point in there, would there be that whole order, but with one slight difference or maybe that whole order just said again, you know, that kind of thing. So you, you think about all these things. Obviously. It would be huge, but the company publishing it might realize that they could take a shortcut. If they put all the words that begin with A in a volume titled mm -hmm. A, they wouldn't have to print the initial A. Readers would know to just add the A because it's the A volume. By removing the initial A, the publisher is left with every A word sans the first A which has surprisingly- Oh yeah, no, it is the whole list and, and you put it back in the list. So it does contain itself. Just one of the 20- But that's just the nature of infinity. Has been decomposed into the entire thing. Mm -hmm. It is now that we're ready to investigate this video's titular paradox. Right, but that's only if matter is infinitely divisible. If there is a limit. But then again, that's, that's, that goes against the whole spirit of mathematics, you know? Like math is not about like, oh yeah, there's a limit here. I guess we're not going to go that way. It's like, go in the deep end anyways. But um, if an atom is made up, or like a subatomic particle is made up of other particles, but they're infinitely divisible, they're infinitely small, which again, that, that means that there's a way to reconcile between countable and uncountable infinity, that they would both exist in the universe. Then you would have an infinite number of particles that make it up, which I mean, that would be fucking, in, that would be an insane discovery to realize that there are infinite amounts of things in the universe. Because then what he said in the beginning of the video, where it's like, to say that there is an infinite amount of anything is wrong because infinity is not an amount but in that case yeah that would be an amount there would be literally an amount of things that there would be an infinite amount of and if you can say that then von Oktarski is a very easy paradox to get around you just pull out a whole nother uh you pull out all the odd numbers from the chocolate bar of all the of all the points or even all the pieces even all the atoms and you're left with the same amount because there's an infinite amount maybe von Oktarski is just like a, a backhanded way of being able to say an infinite amount rather than like a sequence. What if we turned an object, a 3D thing, into a Hyper Webster? Mm -hmm. Could we decompose pieces of it? Right, 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 right. So my issue with this is figure out if, ooh, wait, okay, I'm thinking about it now. Maybe there's three levels. Maybe I just don't like how it, maybe it just looks ugly to me, is uncountably infinitely small, infinitesimal points. And then there is any real number that's not infinity, smaller than infinity, uh, or, or not real number, like rational number. Um, and then there is the highest level, which is infinity. If there is a ball that we have, we take the ball and it's infinite in size, then taking any chunk of that ball out to make a new ball. If you, exo if you do it at a hyper speed, eventually, and, and you're not taking, you're, you're defining it because it's all about definitions. You're not taking more and more of the ball every time. You're taking the same amount of the ball every time, but you do it at an infinitely increasing pace. Eventually, I guess in theory, you will have created another ball of the same size, which makes sense, maybe. Actually, no, no, that does make sense. That does make sense. You've created another Hilbert Hotel. That's what you've done. You've created another Hilbert Hotel and you've filled it up, which isn't a difficult thing to do in the thought experiment. And what's more is that you can take the chunks of any of any size it doesn't matter how big they are so long as they're not infinity and and you can do that with that but that's a countable infinity you're taking a countable infinity in a universe where infinity exists and you're able to do that i can live with that when you say that you're going to break up a finite sized object into infinite pieces that's when you have to ask yourself do any of those pieces actually have mass and then therefore you come to the realization that if we can apply in our universe a, 
a mathematical definition to say that there is an infinite amount of pieces that make up any finite object. And that if we're going to assume that that exists in the universe, that we're just going to define it as that, then we also have to admit that infinitesimals are not zero, that they have mass, that they are greater than zero, which that to me, I don't know if I could live with that one, you know, I mean, live with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a figure of speech, which, which leads me to the very, I guess you could say coping mechanism to go like, ah, infinity doesn't exist in our universe. It just the inner machinations of our minds, you know, and, and that's sort of, I guess that's a way of just dismissing dismissing it all together, but I'm not interested in math like I used to be. School math, like, and the way the teachers teach math, I hated it. Like they really fucked me up to, oh, show your work, show your work. Like these, I hate the, honestly, I hate math teachers. I don't think I've ever, genuinely my favorite teacher of all time, my fourth grade teacher, Miss Holden, she was actually the one that made me hate math. I've never had a good math teacher, but yeah, maybe if I was into math, I would want to dive deeper into this. But if this is a coping mechanism, then that's what it is. But I don't like the idea that, fuck, I lost it. I have no RAM in my mind, bro. I think I have a good processor and I think I have a damn good GPU, but I have no RAM. I can't keep the thoughts. Into the whole thing? Yes. The first thing we need to do is give every single point on the surface. See, that makes sense to me. It makes sense to me if you're you're willing to, to take Minecraft blocks and make it infinite in size because if it is infinite in size and it exp expanses the entire universe then there is no room for an observer to say that it's not smooth it is ulti it is everything it, it, to say that it's even a sphere might be kind of disingenuous to say you know so taking any chunks out of that to make a new thing in a thought experiment that makes sense to me you can make a whole nother version of itself you can use it to create and hold on to the universe but from a finite object, I think I'm going to just stick with my, ah, the infinity doesn't exist. Let's just move on to something else. Sphere, one name and one name only. A good way to do this is to name them after how they can be reached by a given star. Yeah, one name and one name only. Come on, man. This is what you were describing earlier. This is not countable infinity. This is uncountable infinity. And like, bro, if you have uncountable infinity, if you can divide things into an uncountable infinity, which is, I guess, what you would need. In a certain sense, you can pair it because you can, let's say infinitesimals, let's go with it. Infinitesimals do have mass. And you take in a ball and you're going to pull out one and you're going to go, ah, this is an infinitesimal piece. This is another infinitesimally small piece. This is another one. This is another one. You can keep going. The question is, are you actually eating into the mass of that object? If it's infinite, can't you just rearrange it? And so in that way, an object that has a starting initial conditions where you can take out a countable, you can start with a countable infinity sequence. I mean, I guess you would never end. You can define it in one way, but if you're never ending it, then then the math can never really be resolved, right? Like, is it an uncountable infinity or is that a countable infinity? But then you have to ask the amount right? When you're describing the size of infinities, you're describing the amounts. Maybe that's why scientists are, are, and mathematicians are able to understand this paradox and I'm not. And that's also probably the reason why, to me, I don't like thinking of uncountable infinity as bigger. I like thinking of it as different. But in the beginning of the video, in order to describe people, I'm an amateur when it comes to understanding infinity. I'm a beginner. When you want to teach beginners, you know how when you teach someone in school something, you give them like a basic understanding, even if it's not true. And then once they understand it, then you give them the complex understanding that's, that proves what they thought to not be true. So in my mind, what I'm thinking is they're not different sizes. I think that comes from people telling me because I would only watch beginner videos because they were the most fascinating and they would get the most views. So they had the highest budget. So people would actually put a lot of effort into them rather than just it being some boring ass lecture with a shitty ass microphone of someone just writing down math on a chalkboard. I hate those videos. I like the animations, you know? So I always stayed a beginner. I never progressed. I never advanced my understanding of infinities. And, and, and so because of that, all of the, when you watch beginner videos on black holes, it's like take a shot every time someone says, even light cannot escape it. It's like, bro, I fucking get it. I've heard that a million times. Every single time I watch a video on a, can anyone, I genuinely want anyone to find a black hole video. Like one, I challenge anyone to find a black hole video where they don't mention that light cannot escape. 
as if the whole world hasn't heard that a million times already. In the same way, all of these videos explaining infinity have to include something along the lines of you're thinking about it wrong. You cannot imagine it as an amount. You have to imagine it as something else. You have to imagine it as the series of all, you know? And, and so because of that, you have to ask in this case, there's an infinite amount of indivisible particles that make up this sphere. Is there, is that a countable infinity or an uncountable infinity? Cause it's kind of both. Move this starting point across the surface of the sphere in steps that are just the right length, no matter how many times or in what direction we rotate, so long as we never backtrack, it will never wind up in the same place twice. We only need to rotate in four directions to achieve this paradox. Up, down, left, and right. Around well, unless you unless you go up and then right and then right and then up, then you land in the same place twice. But if you're going by um, any like measure of any integer or anything like that, then yeah, I'll never land in the same place twice. But that's because the nature of it is irrational. That's like saying with that, you know what this is like saying? You know what this is like saying? That if you break down fractions enough, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one sixth, eventually, if you do this an infinite amount of times, you will reach an infinitesimal. That's what this is saying, which it's, I don't know, is it? It might be, it might, it might be, and it might have mass. I just don't know. Around two perpendicular axes. We are going to need every single possible sequence that can be made of any finite length. Okay, 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 look. Every possible sequence that can be made of, ev of any finite length. Okay, the, the length doesn't matter the fact that it's finite. Um, if you try to count an uncountable infinity in between zero and one on the number line versus zero and infinity on the number line, it's still the same infinity. It's still an uncountable infinity. So the, the finite length, the, the size of the ball itself doesn't matter. What matters is how you're defining the points and then what the hell you're doing to it. And if you're looking for every single possible combination, if you're assuming that this is Minecraft and there are blocks and that there are points like that, then it's not infinite and it cannot be infinite. If you're assuming that it's irrational, and that it's a sphere and that that's how spheres work and that they're irrational and that that's how our universe works, then you're gonna end up with kind of a countable infinity in one way because you can start counting at least, but you're never going to be able to exhaust it. Even with, even by forcing yourself to exhaust it using countable infinity methods, Zeno's paradox running and, and putting up a different colored flag, every single or putting up, up flag down flag or a different color flag for every step that you take which constantly gets smaller and smaller and smaller it doesn't matter you're still not going to be able to put the flag up enough times to count an uncountable infinity to count to the irrational numbers you will still be left with more points like you can go a finite length but then you go like okay i found this i found this new point you can always always no matter how many times you exhaust it go another arrow down and you will land on a point you've never landed on before always just i by definition right am i am i wrong in thinking that? but of just these four rotations that means we will need left right up and is down. is uncountable infinity and countable infinity the same amount here i i, I feel so fucking stupid because i'm like people much smarter than me have thought about this and they don't have these questions it's like, it's like when you're asking a question, you're like, you're not paying attention in class. You're like, uh, what did, what, what, did, what is this thing? And they're like, the teacher's like, we went over this. Why weren't you paying attention? That's what I feel like right now. As well as left, left, left up, left down, but of course not left, right, because well, that's backtrack. Okay, cool. Left and then right means you're the same as you were before you did anything. So no left rights, no right lefts, and no up downs and no down ups. Also, reasonable. I'm writing the rotations. That doesn't that doesn't make a difference. That doesn't actually make a difference in the end result. Right to left. So the final rotation is the leftmost letter. That will be important later on. Anyway, a list of all possible sequences of allowed rotations. Wait a second. Wait a second. Huh? Also, notice that I'm writing the rotations in order right to left. So the final rotation is the leftmost letter. That will be important later on. Anyway, a list of all possible C- Oh my God, you can do that. But you're not defining a starting point. That's ridiculous. 
You're not defining a starting point, but maybe he is defining a starting point at, at the, you know, the pole or wherever. And so you're creating an infinite sequence and then you have an ending point. That's ridiculous. I, I don't know what the hell is going on anymore, dude. I'm lost. I'm just watching this for entertainment at this point. Sequences of allowed rotations that are finite in length is, well, huge. Countably infinite, in fact. But if we have- That makes sense that it's countably infinite. I can live with that. Um, what I can't reconcile is how, even after exhausting all of this, you could say that you've got every point of the circle. Or rather, not even that. You can always keep going and get more points of the circle. But let's say that that's not even required to, to take out all the pieces and make it into another circle. My issue is, are these pieces or points? And counting from the right to the left. Bro, he just skipped over that like it was nothing. That's a whole, that could be a whole other section of the video. If you could, uh, I mean, I guess you can do that, but that's, that's a beautiful thought to think about. You're counting from right to left in an infinite sequence where you're only defining what's on the left. That's kind of funny, actually. I guess you can do it. But in order to get all of the, the points, if, if you're counting this as a countably infinite sequence, then it cannot, it, like, mathematically speaking, be, just from what people know about countable versus uncountable infinity, I could be wrong. Mathematically speaking, you cannot have a starting point. Your whatever starting point you have cannot. It needs to. It needs to land on every single possible point of the of the sphere, right? It cannot land on every part of the sphere, like mathematically, because you will always have more. Because it's it's a countable infinity. You're trying to assign that every every uncountable point of a sphere onto a countable infinity. You're trying to assign them a one to one value, which you can't do. So this is cool. And there's a beauty to what he just said. And I didn't think about that before. Why didn't I, I was so fucking like, I was, I don't think I was paying attention while I was watching this when I was a kid, honestly, because I don't remember half the shit. I'm, I'm probably gonna have dreams about thinking about that. Look, DDR, Dance Dance Revolution, and RRR, the movie, and you, the, the, the song, which you might also be a movie, but that might be like a I or a, or M or F or something like that. I think there's a, there's a few of those. There's a few of those movies that are like just one letter. M is one of them, I think. Apply each one of them to a starting point in green here, and then name the point we land on after the sequence that brought us there, we can name a countably infinite set of- Wait, 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 what? Countably infinite, in fact. But if we apply each one of them to a starting point in green here, and then name the point we land on after the sequence that- Okay, wait, 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 wait. Explain one thing to me. In this infinite sequence, okay? this infinite sequence of different combinations of directions, like paths that we've taken, right? Some of them, just by like theory, right? Will be infinitely long. Or rather, another way to word it is, we will never uh, be able to end the sequences that we're running on, you know? The directions that we're going in, we're, we're, we're not gonna be able to end that. If that's the case, we just created a starting point that we've defined as well as an ending point because that's the leftmost uh, letter. So we have a starting point and an ending point, like a three and uh, and like a, like a number, like a set of numbers where it's like, this is an infinite amount of numbers in this irrational number, which is what the irrational number is, right? So maybe that's how you reconcile it. Maybe that's, that could be a beautiful way to do it. Maybe that's it right there. Where it's like 3.141592678973228464338327503297163957509794 That's like saying, I know the first 60 digits. I had a, uh, I memorized a few and then this autistic kid was like, oh, I bet I can memorize more than you. And I'm like, I bet I can memorize more than you. And he's like doing it in class. And then he got to hundred digits. I got 60, he got to 60 as well. And then he got to hundred digits on the same day in the same class and I'm like, all right, you know what, bro, you win, you got it, you can, you can have it. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna fight you on that. This is a waste of my fucking time, bro. I'd rather just like, like fucking invest my brain power in like making YouTube videos or something, dude. What Michael's describing here is like making a claim that, not to say that there is an end to infinity, but that you can define an end to an infinity that you define. Like you can say, this sequence of infinite numbers starts with a three and ends with a four. And it's an infinite, non-repeating, non-terminating set of numbers, which maybe from a geometric perspective you can describe. Like you can have them both start off on the number line here 
and then they both get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller like uh, distance wise like the next number is right here and the next number is half that distance and the next number is half that distance and in the center they collide with them both reaching infinity so an infinity times two which is a which is an interesting maybe it's not an interesting way to look at it maybe other ma mathematicians if they were to see this video they'd be like dog what what the fuck are you talking about but I feel like that's what he did. He defined a starting point and then he defined an ending point. And then he's saying that there needs to be a, a sequence, at least one sequence, but probably an infinite amount of sequences where they go on for infinity, yet they have an ending point. It's like describing whether or not the light is going to be on or off at the end of, um, you know, switching the switches like that, breaking it down. Or like at the end of Zeno's paradox where he's running, putting up different flags at every step, at every half, the distance that it previously was it's like saying ah at the end he will have this colored flag or at the end he will have this colored flag like like a universal um probability breakage multiverses i don't know i'm just trying to stimulate my mind with words i'm overstimulating myself hella right now with this it's actually kind of fun i want to read the comments i can't imagine a conversation with vsauce while he's baked not gonna lie if you counted every possible number from zero to one, there would be more numbers than counting from zero to infinity. It's gotta be one of the most existentially terrifying conversation starter. Eh, there's more terrifying conversation starters. And there's definitely more terrifying existential, existentialist conversation starters. It's more of a, like you're in the bar and you say it to someone and they'll be like, dog, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, and actually people would be like, I'm not interested in this shit. Like, I don't care about this fucking math, bro. Why you, I'm not, we're not in school, dude. We're at the fucking bar. Like, that's what I'd imagine people would say. Oh, th this is the perfectly what I'm describing right here. Zeno's paradox. It's interesting to see that after so many years, none of Vsauce's videos seem old. Some of them seem old. The old ones where he was clickbaiting, put in like tits and thumbnail. Because that, that just worked, bro, on YouTube. Remember when that worked so well? Before they realized like, oh, we got to adjust our algorithm. Like, before they actually realize that there needs to be human manual intervention in adjusting the algorithm. I think that may have been the first time they did it. When they realized like, fuck, sex appeal is gonna, is gonna just take over the whole thing. It's gonna be a porn website. It's gonna be like Instagram. It's gonna be like when you teach apes that there is value, that there is a monetary value to this currency. The same way that people imagine monetary value to assign with views. The first thing they're gonna do is pay for prostitution. It's the very first thing they're gonna do. I feel like that may have been the first time there was a human interference in changing the way that the algorithm works uh, in applying, not like, oh, algorithm, I want you to prioritize likes versus views or watch time versus it, but I want you to, I want to introduce a specific bias of, uh, of content type. I think that may have been the first time they did that, which is like, damn, before they did that, what a crazy easy way to get views, dude. 10 million views instantly. All you gotta do is put tits in the thumbnail. You don't even have to have a fucking... It could be a black screen of a video. But yeah, those... Michael was... He participated in playing the game of the algorithm. And and those videos did not age as well as you might think. Look, here, I'll show you right now. Look at this. If I go to oldest... Look at this. Wonder Woman and new channel. And then another one with the tits out. And then another one with the tits out. And another one. It's like, these videos actually didn't... Like this one right here... They, they didn't age all that well. Osaka, Zero Suit Samus, Gamer Girls in general, bro. Comic Con. Dang, there's quite a few. There's more of these than I remember. This was around when I first started watching Vsauce, about right here. These, this ended up being Vsauce 3 type content, but it's like this, hey, it got views, bro. It got views, it works. Dude, there's actually a lot more than I remember. There's a lot more than I remember, holy shit. This one's fair. Yeah, Images of the Week and Dong. When did he start doing loot? I feel like loot started a while back, has it not? And I believe he was also doing game loot on the original Vsauce channel. Yeah, loot number 16. Did I skip past all of them? They might be unlisted. Yeah, Mind Blow. I don't think Mind Blow was ever on here. I think it was only on... It's not to say that there were not videos like that, but it, I think the official series of Mind Blow was only on Vsauce 2. After about these and things like that, like how old can we get once he started doing all this shit? And even these videos, like I know he, I know he put all this stuff in there. I know he, he did still clickbait and things like that. But after images, after IMG ended, after that series ended, that's when all of Vsauce videos became ageless or timeless. Before that, uh, pretty impressive that you guys have found such a complicated glitch. Hope the devs don't patch it. Hey, bro, uh, 
I think they did. I think they patched it from day one. I think they knew we were going to exploit it like this. And they kind of let it exist a little bit. But then they put little mechanisms in there to make sure that we can never exploit it in the real world. It's like we find an exploit in a speedrunning game, but it's only TAS. It's not human viable. That's what it is. Bro, math is like TAS in, in real life. Like you're just going like, ah, let's assume you cut a cake infinite times. Like it's, it's like TAS in real life. This is simply how a cobblestone generator works. That's fucking facts, bro. So funny how I was, I was talking about Minecraft as an example. And this dude, bro, Minecraft makes you more intelligent. If you have an infinitely large cake and you subtract an infinite amount of slices, you can rebuild the original cake with the infinite number of slices, leaving you with two infinite cakes, according to math. Hey, bro, this is just TAS. It's not human viable. You know, this is not RTA. You can't actually do this, but it, th it theoretically is possible. Proud to say I fully understand all of this now. Do you see what I'm saying? Other people get this. Why am I so lost? This is one of the most popular videos because so many people come back to it every now and then because they don't get it. Yeah, bro, same. That's why I'm clicking on it again. I didn't click on the other ones because I'm like, oh, I've seen these. I like them. I understand them. I didn't get this one. Yeah, this one's really hard to understand if your brain is not accustomed to thinking in infinites and using assumptions to make other assumptions. Like I bet math majors would be able to follow this quite a bit easier than most people for that reason. There you go. I dropped out of college. I, I, I completed my, my uh, college prerequisite of math at a community college because it was cheaper and I didn't want to spend all that money taking a math in a more expensive school, which I did go to, but then I just dropped out of college. So there was no point in me doing it anyways. It's my fifth and I'm still clueless. Hey, I'm right here with you, buddy. Superposition took me three years to grasp. It was about the same for me too. I know, right? I was 13 when I first watched this. I think I was about 15 when I watched this. Same. I can't grasp it all. I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I think I'm even more clueless than I was back then. I think back then I understood it better. Look, I get it now. I finally understood. I watched this years ago, mostly listened to it and always got lost in the circles part. Me too. I think that's where I got lost as well. I thought that was the part that, that really fucked me up. But now I understand the whole thing, even the paradox. Hey bro, good for you. What is there? We can name a countably infinite set of points on the surface. I don't get how that's countable infinity. I mean, okay, you can name a countable and countably infinite set, but it's just dimensionless points. To say that it has mass is crazy. But if you're going to say that you're going to get so many, dimen so many dimensionless infinite sesame small points, that even though it doesn't have mass, you're still going to create it into an object of mass. That makes sense if you're going to say that we're going to get an uncountable infinite of points. But what you're doing here is you're not getting an uncountable infinite amount of points. So I just... I'm lost. How, say, these four strings on our list would work. Right, up, left. Okay, rotating the starting point this way takes us here. Let's color code the point based on the final rotation in its string. In this case, it's left, and for that, we will use purple. Next up, down, down. That sequence takes us here. We name the point DD and color it blue since we ended with a down rotation. RDR, that will be this point's name, takes us here. And for a final right rotation, let's use red. Finally, for a sequence that ends with up, let's color code the point orange. Now, if we imagine completing this process for every single sequence, we will have a countably infinite number of points named and color coded. That's great, but- Yeah, but they're just points and they're massless and you don't actually have anything You've just labeled them and defined them. It's like, um, it's like a, uh, shit. It's not like anything. There's, there's no real world equivalent to this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of, no, there is like, there's like a, um, when you're, when you're indexing, when you're indexing numbers, zero index, one index in programming or whatever, you're marking down a place, a destination, a locality, uh, like relative to everything else, but you're not actually a, marking down a, a chunk of mass or anything. You're not claiming any particular territory. You're just defining a location. To say that you're gonna take a bunch of points of defined locations and make them into a new sphere, that makes no sense to me. You're gonna take a bunch of points of mass, that makes sense to me. I'm willing to, and I'm not only am I willing, I'm more than happy to say, that, but this is complete bullshit probably, 
but I'm more than happy to say, just because it's a this nice, beautiful way to think about it with the universe, that if you take the definitions of localities, but in an uncountably infinite way, you can create something of mass, which is fucking ridiculous, but fuck it. Is that not kind of pretty to think about? But yeah, this is just points. They're just definitions. Not enough. There are an uncountably infinite number of right, right. spheres mm -hmm. surface. That's what I've been saying. But no worries. We can just pick a point we missed, any point, and color it green. To start a new point. That's what I'm saying. Good. Okay, cool. So we can keep doing that. And then we could do that an infinite amount of times. So we have countable infinite. And then we have a countably infinite amount of starting points so that we have a, even more in maybe. But it's... It really is the same thing. Adding another one is not actually increasing the size of it. We're not doing anything by adding any more because it's still countably infinite. At the end of the day, all we have are points that you can look at and go, that is a location on a sphere. Even if you exhaust a, a infinite amount of like integer or whatever points on the sphere to start as a, a starting point, and then you do the same thing, which you don't need to do. All the starting points will be, putting infinite starting points is literally the same amount of points as doing all of this and then doing that for an infinite amount of points. It's like saying one times infinity is the same as infinity times infinity. It's the same amount as uh, that one is a bit unintuitive, but it is the same amount. If it wasn't the same amount, then that whole fraction thing wouldn't work. The, um, what was his name? Car carpet, uh, something with a C, something with a C. Yeah, yeah, this thing, this thing. Cantor, Cantor, right. I'm not, maybe not Cantor, uh, but this thing right here, the fact that you can go in a sequence and go like, but it's getting bigger and bigger every time. What you're doing is you're assuming that not only is there an infinite end, but there's an infinite amount of end points that you're going to need to end on. So you're going to need to create more starting points. That's kind of what's going on. What, What's going on here? No, no, wait, this is not it. Oh, he doesn't describe it in this video. He describes it in the infinity video. But this is this is the pure Zeno's paradox thing. This is, there's a two meter long distance I have to run. I'm gonna run one meter and then I'm gonna stick up a red flag. And then I'm gonna run half meter and then stick up a blue flag and put the red flag down. And then a quarter of a meter and stick up the other one. And then this and stick up the other one. And just keep going and going and going and, and keep doing it. If you think about the distances from flag to flag to flag, it's a half, then a quarter, then an eighth, then a sixteenth, then 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, and so on and so on and so on, right? To admit that you would have gotten every point, that it's not just a point where you're marking a flag, but that you're actually able to get some something tangible out of it. To assume that that there that there is an irrational of the universe, that there is an irrational amount in the universe that you can exhaust with an uncountable, with, with a countable infinity, that would mean that by taking that one over 2048, one over 4096, one over 8192, one over 16,384, I just like fucking around and, you know, showing off because, you know, that's how I actually get my kick out of this stuff. All of my enjoyment from math comes from like this one girl that was like, wow, you're really good at math. And that gives me all of my enjoyment in math. Otherwise, I don't think I'd like it. That's why all the math things that I know just sound impressive, but they're not actually impressive. Memorizing numbers like that is not impressive. It just sounds like I know a lot about math. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing the math. I'm, I'm literally going off of memory. But this is like saying that one over that number that keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually, it'll reach an infinitesimally small number. Eventually, it will. And in that case, that countable sequence wouldn't work anymore. But it does work because even though it seems like it's going into infinity, not only in one direction, but in all the directions to the right and downward, and you're going to need to have infinitely long lines that extend in every direction like that, in, in those two directions like that, coming back and forth and back and forth, and that needs to go an infinite amount of times. Countable infinity can still exhaust countable infinity because you can always add another uh, letter or number or whatever, or another number to the top part. Like you can keep going with that infinity and you can keep going with infinity going downwards, keep adding another number to add to the denominator. And so by our definitions, by our understanding of like the universe, infinity times infinity is the same as one times infinity. 
And so doing this fucking does nothing, dude. You've already exhausted an un uh, accountably infinite amount of points. You can do it again, sure. And you can do it accountably infinite number of times, but you're not getting anywhere. It's still accountably infinite number of points. You wanna do it everywhere? You have to place the initial point an uncountably infinite amount of times. And in that case, you don't even need to do this whole fucking charade. You've exhausted the whole circle or the whole sphere like this. A new starting point and then run every sequence from here. After doing this to an uncountably infinite number of starting points, we will have in- Whoa, 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 wait, 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 what? And then run every sequence from here. After doing this to an uncountably infinite number of starting points, okay, have indeed named and colored every. Yeah, that's not necessary. You don't need to do it to in. This is not necessary. With just placing down points in an uncountably infinite way, which makes no sense. But I mean, placing down an infinite number of points also makes no sense from a time perspective. Just doing that, you will have named every point. It doesn't matter, like you can place the blue and the red and, and the orange and all this shit, but it's actually going to end up landing on a green that already exists because that's your starting point. You're, the green will cover the entire circle if you're going to put it on an uncountably infinite thing. But Tarski's paradox does not need any of this. It's, you can just do it just off of thoughts alone. You don't even need to know math to do it. You don't even need to, need to go that deep, honestly. Like, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, if this is the route that they're willing, that they're going in, they're going into uncountable infinity territory, bro, you can make the fucking sun out of a chocolate bar. Single point on the surface, just once. With the exception- Wait, 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 wait. World starting points, we will have indeed named and colored every single point on the surface, just once. Okay. With the exception of poles. Every sequence has two hmm? poles of rotation, locations on the sphere ah. come back to exactly where they started. I see, or but that's not an issue though. Because like I said, it doesn't actually matter the, the rotations and all that shit. You will have placed a, an uncountably infinite amount of starting points. There will be a starting point on the pole. If you are, and, and it's, it, it sounds wrong, it sounds wrong, but don't think about it in terms of integers. Think about it in terms of concepts. You're going through, you're scrolling through your list like this right here, and there's no point placed on the pole. But that's because you're imagining it in the sequence that's on the, the left, the, the integer sequence. If you think about it and, and go like, okay, I trust that if I'm going uncountable here and it's irrational numbers, like how it is with the green numbers on the right, all the points will be marked. All of them will be, even the ones that are literally impossible to mark because they are irrational, non-terminating, non-repeating numbers. They will still be marked. Any sequence of right or left rotations, the poles are the north and south poles. The problem with poles like these is that more than one sequence can lead us to them. They can be named more than once and be colored in more than one color. For example, if you follow some other sequence to the north or south pole, any subsequent rights or lefts will be equally valid names. In order to deal with this, we're going to just count them out of the normal scheme and color them all yellow. Every sequence has two, so there are a countably infinite amount of them. Wait, what? No, there's an infinite, infinitely, uh, uncountably infinite number of them. Because every, if every sequence has two, then that means that, let's just say every sequence has one because you're just dividing by two. You're taking every sequence as two, we're gonna make them one. Okay, fine, let's just simplify things down. Every sequence has one. There's an uncountably infinite number of sequences. So there's an uncountably infinite number of poles. What is this countable infinity? I'm so fucking lost. Now, with every point on the sphere given just one name and just one of six colors, we are ready to take the entire sphere. Well, uh, they, they, this, they could be all green, honestly. Every pole is also on a green point, and uh, what the fuck is the center? Is that my center of the sphere? Are we going in depth like 3D here too? Like, or are we just counting a, a sphere with like an infinitesimally thin surface? Too much to think about. Every point on the surface corresponds to- Like this is, this is literally my brain processing limit. ...line of points below it all the way to the center point, and we will be dragging every point's line along with it. The lone center point 
we will set aside. Okay, first we cut out and extract all the yellow pulps, the green starting points, the orange. Okay, I get why everyone's confused about this stuff, and I get why I was confused about it too. I don't know why the hell we're setting this aside. I don't know what what purpose it has. We wouldn't even need to duplicate the center. The center is not a point of mass. A singular, that's why people have so much issue with reconciling the fact that uh, a, a mathematical singularity is so fucking weird to imagine as the center of a black hole. Because it, it's just a point of a reference. It's just a point of reference for like relative to other points. If you were to take the center, take a, a stick out of the center, a radius, and just start waving it around everywhere and just drawing a bunch of points, you would get something resembling what we would consider to be look like to consider to look like a sphere. However, the question is, after infinite time passes, would you have gotten every point? And the answer is no. In fact, it's so much of a no that even if you move it even a little in any direction after any amount of time, you will let, you will be guaranteed to have landed in a completely new place that you have never been to before and will never have never ever go back to ever guaranteed every time that's how much of a no it is that's the difference between countable and uncountable infinity and reconciling those two i don't fucking know how to do that bro this all like i've already kind of dismissed the fact that it's even necessary to have directions and just green points are just good enough so i'm not even i'm hardly paying attention honestly up points the blue down points, and the red and purple left and right points. That's the entire sphere. With just these pieces, you can build the whole thing. Pretty visuals, dude. Great, like, whoever animated this did a great job. A piece composed of every point accessed via a sequence ending with a left rotation. If we rotate this piece- Yeah, but, but you don't even need to, I know what, I know what, what he's saying and, the the little shit that he does where they where he combines all the the circles back together right here this is the part that people are confused about so the way that he combines it this is not necessary you can tell the first guy in the first hotel in your infinite series of hilbert's hotels hey get out of the fucking hotel bro let everyone move down a spot let the person in room two move down to room one and room three move down to room two you can do that by eliminating the l boom you have every sequence again, like in um, the Hyper Webster. You, all you need is this one piece and you remove points from it and then you've created the entire sphere again. But th but an uncountable infinity is weird because it's like this. Are these points or are do, do these points have mass? Because if they're pieces that have mass, that means you can make it a shape shift in anything you want it to by removing all the L's or removing all the L's and then all the U's or removing all the L's and then half of the D, like you can shape shift it into whatever the hell you want it to be, into any size, into any length, because what this is, is this is a bunch of lines stemming from the center, right? Okay, let me ask you this. If this is an uncountably infinite set of, first, before the, before this leaves my mind, if there is an uncountable infinite, infinitely number, fuck, what's the proper grammar for it? Fuck the grammar. Just focus on what I'm saying. If there's an uncountably infinite number of points or pieces and they have any mass at all that is not zero it's an infinitely large circle um there are ways to make um fuck maybe i'm wrong because i believe that there are mathematical shapes that can have infinite surface area but limited mass which that that's totally fine but i believe there's also shapes that have infinite mass but limited no there's not no, there's not. That doesn't make any sense. Infinite mass, but limited surface area. Look, if there's any mass at all, and there's an infinite amount of points, I don't care if it's countable or uncountable. It's an infinite mass object. That's what this circle is. So are you talking about mass or are you talking about points? The second thing I wanna say is this. Here's a, here's a, a, if everything I've said is difficult to comprehend and you're trying to, and, and you just want a way to bypass the Bonatarsky paradox altogether and, and feel like you're smart, here's a simple way to look at it. These are not points on the edges or all around it. They're lines stemming from the center. But each line, the length of the line when it's over here is the same as the length of the line when it's over here. Does that mean that when you reach out here, it is less dense than it is in here? No, same density. 
when you reach all the way over here, you can, you can kind of change the radius. You can take all these points and snip all of them off like a haircut. You can just trim all around it at about right there and you would end up with the same amount of uncountably infinite, I believe uncountably infinite. Maybe he's talking about countable infinity, but he did say uncountable, in, uncountably infinite starting points. You will end up with the same amount of points on the, on the outer surface area of the sphere as you will if you were to expand these lines out into infinity too. The same thing. Two things have to exist here. One, uncountable infinity has to be real. That's an axiomatic truth that has to exist. Two, infinitesimally small points have to be greater than zero. And if those two statements are true, if those are two axiom, axioms that are true, you can just take this, extend all the points outwards and take a ball that is this big and just make it this big with no issue because it's the same amount of endpoints on the surface. Nothing's changed. Maybe if you wanna say, okay, the mass on the inside, you, you're not extending the points themselves but you're dragging all the points outwards, right? Because these lines are just measurements of points. You're taking all the points and you're just assuming that they are now further out. If it's uncountable infinity, it doesn't matter how much further, how much bigger they are, how much more of a, how much more the soap bubble expands with the flies on the soap bubble. If there's an uncountable infinite amount of flies on the soap bubble, regardless of how big or small it is, it will still be the same infinite mass surface. So you don't even need all this Banach-Tarski, we're gonna combine this one with this one and this one with this one and then we're gonna shift this one like, you don't need to do any of that. You could just fucking think it to exist in it into existence. So which is why I'm, I'm against the idea that infinitesimals are, are larger than zero. It's why I'm against the idea that 0.9 repeating is any different from one because 0.9 repeating is 0.3 repeating times three. 0.3 repeating is one third. One third times three is one. It just makes sense that 0.9 repeating is one, but we're just, we're just trying our best to imagine that in an imaginary world where infinity does exist, where the universe is infinite in size and infinities can exist, that that's how it would work. That maybe it could be different, but in our universe is not different. That shouldn't stop anyone from trying to think of these things and you know, Banach tar skiing their way into going like, hmm, that's some interesting math. No, nothing, no, nobody stops the math train. The math train stops for fucking no one or nothing. All right, it doesn't matter. There's a paradox here, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Like that's the spirit of math. That's the, the adventure of math, you know? But um, I had all shit math teachers. So, except for Coach Hannick, he was a good teacher. So, so I don't care about math anymore. But if math is your adventure, then, you know, more power to you. I'm not saying like, oh yeah, this theory is, paradox is wrong. I'm just, I'm just saying like, hey, you do you, man. I'm going to cope. I'm going to use my coping mechanisms to just go like, ah, but infinity is infinity. So that must mean that infinity is infinity. So fuck this theory. And I'm going to coping mechanism my way out of it because I don't like doing math anymore. But if this theory makes sense to you, then... Shit, you're a smarter man than me. The same as adding an R to every point's name. Right, but that you can do that just by getting rid of the L's and then getting rid of the U's and then getting rid of the D's and, and you'll be left with all the R's at the end. Left and then right is a backtrack. They that already exists. Around. Yeah. And look what happens when we reduce them away. The set becomes the same as a set of all points with names that end with L, but also U, D and every mm -hmm. point reached with no rotation. That's the full set of starting points. We have turned less than a quarter of the sphere into nearly three quarters just by- But they're not points. I mean, they're not pieces, they're points. You're just describing the locality. Oh, wait, wait, no, he's right. Because if you're doing that, then that means you're able to have the descriptions of the other localities. If these are defined points of locations on the sphere um, and you're able to do this, that means that you're able to then define other points. Oh, okay. So in another universe, it makes sense. In another universe, you can do this. You can actually do, you can take a chocolate bar and make it a bigger chocolate bar. Rotate it. We added nothing. It's like the Hyperwebster. 
If we add the right piece and the poles of rotation in the center point, well, we've got the entire sphere again, but hmm. stuff left over. To make a second copy, let's rotate the up piece down. The down ups cancel because, well, it's the same as going yep. nowhere, and we're left with a set of all starting points, the entire up piece, the right piece, and the left piece, but there's a problem here. We don't need this extra set of starting points. We still haven't used the original ones. No worries, let's just start over. We can just move everything from the up piece that turns into a starting point when rotated down. That means every point whose final rotation is up. Let's put them in the down piece. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Let's just start over. We can just move everything from the up piece that turns into a starting point when rotated down. That means what the fuck is turning into a starting point when rotated down? I thought he at some point was like, ah, oh, we're going to have an uncountably infinite number of starting points. And then they're going to end up in a countably infinite number of poles. So then he just decided to just, you know, fucking shank us right there. And then now he's like, ah, oh, but the, the countably infinite number of points, uh, if rotated, will end up filling in sequences in the uncountably infinite set. How? Fucking how? I thought we just got, I thought we established it can't do that. Point whose final rotation is up. Let's put them in the down piece. Whoa, 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 whoa wait, wait. Every point whose final rotation turns into a starting point when rotated. You can just move everything from the up piece that turns in just start points. All starting point cancel because, well, it's the same as go piece. Over. Okay. And we're left with a set of all starting points Cancel because, well, it's the same as going nowhere, and we're left with a set of all starting points. How are we left with a set of all starting points? How does that make sense? If this is a countable infinity, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he just fucking switched his mind again. Maybe this is an uncountable infinity, the, the up points or the down points. Either one doesn't matter. How is it that changing the our perspective, our locality of it, and marking down those points in a countable infinite set is now all of a sudden able to exhaust the uncountably infinite sets. Oh well, I'll just keep watching. Higher up piece, the right piece, and the left piece. But there's a problem here. We don't need this extra set of starting points. We still haven't used the original ones. No worries, let's just start over. What extra set of starting points? An extra set? How the fuck would you even know the starting points? They're irrational. They're all the way on the right. Move everything from the up piece that turns into a starting point when rotated down. That means every point whose final rotation is up. Let's put them in the down piece. Of course, after rotating, points named UU will just turn into points named U. And that would give us a copy here and here. So as it turns out, we need to move all points with any name that is just a string of U's. We will put them in the down piece and rotate the up piece down, which makes it congruent to the up right. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I can't follow this. I can't, I genuinely. Along with some up and the starting point piece and well, we're almost done. The poles of rotation and center are missing from this copy, but no worries. You don't There's fucking need them. The infinite number of holes. Yeah. The poles of rotation used to be, which means there is some pole around which we can rotate. A countably infinite number of holes? How? I get, I, that sounds that sounds pretty and all, but wouldn't there be an infinitely countable, or fuck, wouldn't there be an uncountably infinite number of holes to match the uncountably infinite number of starting points? This sphere such that every pole hole orbits around without hitting another. Well, this is just a bunch of circles with one point missing. Yeah. We fill them each like we did earlier. And we do the same for the center point. Imagine a circle that contains it inside the sphere. So you didn't need to even describe any of this because you can literally imagine a sphere to be an uncountably infinite set of circles like this going around an axis, right? And then you could just say, ah, oh, we're gonna take out a, a, a countably infinite number of holes because that's what he said, but it feels like it's uncountable infinity. I'm lost where he said that we're gonna have a uncountably infinite number of starting points, yet everything else is a countable infinity that results from it. That makes no sense to me. But if, if, if we're gonna go with that, then dude, you could just, you don't need to even have the Noctarsky paradox. You just rip all the points out, make them a new 
circle and then just keep doing this. Done, there you go. I mean sphere, but you'd have to do this all the circles, infinite amount of times, uncountably infinite amount of times. You just fill in from infinity. And look what- That looks like an eye. You've done. We have taken one sphere and turned it into two identical spheres without adding anything. One plus one equals one. Yeah, well, it's like what I said earlier. Him saying one plus one equals one is the, is the same thing as saying one equals two. One equals two if you're able to divide by zero and actually say that it's infinity. One divided by zero is infinity. Two divided by zero is infinity. Infinity equals infinity, one equals two. It's the same thing as, as saying different sized infinite sets, countable or uncountable, uh, can, fuck, I've never seen anyone do it with uncountable infinite sets. I guess you can't just, it's not like you can count them, so, but you know. Um, but it's the same thing as saying like, yeah, Hilbert's Hotel, one of them has only odd numbers, one of them has all odd and even numbers. They have the same amount of people. The same thing, one equals two. A while to go through, but the implications are huge. And mathematicians, science- Yeah, the implications are huge for another fucking universe that we don't live in. Physicists and philosophers are still debating them. Could such a process happen in the real world? I mean, it can happen mathematically, and math allows us to abstractly predict and describe a lot of things in the real world. A lot. Amazing. But notice how he said a lot. He didn't say the real world. He didn't say mathematics allows us, like, he, he didn't define math as saying it allows us to describe the real world. He said, a lot of things. This is one of those things that it doesn't. Maybe, maybe. I, you can never rule it out, honestly. Unless, unless somebody can like give me some proof of it, maybe this might work in the real world. I don't know, I'm, I'm still a beginner, so I'm, I'm open to anything. Accuracy. But does the Bonnot-Tarski paradox take it too far? Is it a place where math and physics separate? Maybe. I still don't know. History is full of examples of mathematical concepts developed in the abstract that we did not think would ever apply to the real world for years, yep. centuries, until eventually science caught up and realized they were totally applicable and you- But I don't think this is a good message. I think it's a good message for normies, for them to appreciate the, the value of mathematicians in society. Because, of, oh, why are people fucking doing math? Okay. They give you all your shit, bro. You wouldn't have shit without them. Good, cool. But that's just an argument for artists in general. Artists are compelled to go in some, like Zima Blue, do some random thing that's seemingly arbitrary, throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. Um, and it doesn't conform to the normal, the normative desires of general society. That's anyone with, with a passion. That's any artist, you know? And mathematicians are no different. And the vast majority of them will come up with things that don't apply to the real world and that don't have any actual use. But the ones that do, that use will transcend and become very, very useful. It's like this rule that my dad had uh, growing up. It was like, you have to try every food at least once, which is like the, which is like a universal rule of saying there needs to be at least one person that's like a, that's like a crazy, you know, brilliant, pianist, you know, who sacrifices everything else, who's, you know, they could be a complete fucking asshole to everyone. There needs to be a Steve Jobs. There needs to be a fucking, in everyone, a fucking Hitler. Like, it's seriously, in everyone. There needs to be a one a person who has a proclivity to do every kind of thing, yet, and they need to have some sort of influence over humanity, but not so much influence that they're able to completely change humanity, enough to where humanity can feel their influence and choose whether or not they want to take on their their influence and their teachings and and their will, you know? And that's how great artists are judged. Hitler was an artist. So was every artist is not a good word. In fact, the majority of artists are evil. If you think about it, art is the uh, dance of opposites. It's the masculine and feminine combined. Every story of the devil, every story of evil combined, describes it as an entity that believes that it can take on the masculine and feminine completely, when really that's not possible. There needs to be a balance, a negative and a positive. This is every, this is the biblical story and all that stuff. All the, the great stories that resonate with human beings, which we are products of the universe, they all describe it like this. They all describe 
the bad, the things that we should avoid as this merging, this singularity. So it's a good, it's a good idea to, to educate the normal people. Like we're fucking deranged. People like me, the artists and all these people, we're mentally ill, straight up. We're the people that are meant to sacrifice our lives and give up everything we have. So that way the rest of the population can actually pass on their genes and go in the right direction and maybe go in a different direction than a different kind of population. And we are the influencers of different cultures in that way, different pockets of populations. I go, I like what that person does. I want to take their teachings and implement it into the way I live my life and things like that, that we're artists and we're all fucked up in the head. And it's cool and all that, that people like Vsauce have these arguments in their videos to try to tell the normal people like, Hey, people like a Fraz, yeah, they're fucked up in the head, but you should still appreciate them. You know, you should still want to keep them around because without them, like the super tasks video, we wouldn't have survived. People like me are, res are partially responsible for keeping the human race alive. Without us, we wouldn't have survived. So I get why he does this, but for mathematicians and for the deranged among us, I don't like this message for us because that's not why you do math. You don't do math to the destination. You don't do math because you're trying to, to have it be applicable to the real world. Because then you set a dangerous precedent, which is if math is not applicable to the real world, then this reasoning cannot be used to justify the brain power and money and time that you put into it. Which no, you should justify it. If you have the proclivity to do it, if you have that, that drive and that desire and that that insatiable, I, oh my God, I fucking, I, I love this. I'm good at it. I want to do it. You fucking do it. It doesn't matter if it helps the world or influences the world or whatever. It's not like me saying any of this stuff is going to stop anyone. You do it because you have that innate arbitrary in a way, knowing that you can know that it's arbitrary and that still won't stop you from wanting to do it. Just like how I want to tell stories for like an arbitrary, like makes no, there's no reason for me to do it. It's not going to help me get girls. It actually, hurts my ability to get girls, the, the stuff I sacrifice for my ability to tell stories, but I still feel the need to do it. I still feel the need to give up my life for this greater cause. And if you have that, you don't need any of this reason like, oh, it might in the future, a hundred years from now, be used for something practical in the real world. Fuck that, bro. Math is an open, empty, beautiful landscape. And I don't want kids to have to go through what I went through. Kids who love math, who they, they have these shit teachers that, that don't know how to teach them math and they ruin uh, the, the pursuit of great math in their heads the way they did for me. Cause I don't like this shit anymore. Like I, I can't watch another math video today. I'm done for the day. But I used to be able to like go deeper and deeper and deeper and I was so excited and I was coming up with all these new things. And I was actually much more of an original math thinker than I was back then. I'm not at all today. Now everything is just what I hear. And, and I don't want any, any kid to be, I don't want them to have to go through what I went through. I don't want them to be discouraged from chasing their passion the way I was by shitty teachers who don't know how to fucking teach them because they don't have a math degree, they have a teaching degree, which a teaching degree is fucking stupid. A teaching degree is a propaganda degree. You're not learning your subject. You're, 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 you're not becoming an expert in what you're doing. You're going to college. I think, think about a teaching degree. A teaching degree, how do you define a teaching degree? It's learning to be an effective communicator of someone else's ideas. You're literally going into a field where you're going to indoctrinate the kids with ideas that you don't get to control. Somebody else is telling them, they're going, we have the ideas we want you to give to the kids and we're gonna allow you to earn money and, and give you this teaching degree so that way you get good at, at indoctrinating them with our ideas because we don't want to put in the effort of being on this side and, and coming up with these ideas and also having teachers to the kids. That's too much. We want to spend all our brain power on this so that way no one can get ahead of us, no one can reach us, and nobody can intellectually simulate our brains within their brains to realize how evil we actually fucking are, which these people are evil. These schools are evil. Literally, it's it's the point of schools is, is to create a, a drone population of mindless like workers, not thinkers. And so if any kids ever see this video and you're interested in, in any math or anything like that, and, and you have a deep interest for it, don't let school interfere with your education the way that I, I let it interfere with mine. I was a bit of a rebel. I got kicked out of high school. I would get in trouble a lot because of this kind of stuff, but I wasn't enough of a rebel. I got kicked out of high school. I should have got, I should have been so much a rebel that I got kicked out of elementary school. If you have 
a gift. Don't let them destroy it. This is not the message that you should be hearing. You should not be hearing, oh, it'll be useful in the future. No, you love it, go for it. The Bonatarsky paradox could actually happen in our real world. The only catch, of course, is that the five pieces you cut your object into aren't simple shapes. They must be infinitely complex yeah. and detailed. That's not possible to do in the real world, where measurements can only get so small and there's only a finite amount of time to do anything. But that shouldn't stop you. Math says it's theoretically valid, and some scientists think it may be physically valid too. There have been a number of papers published suggesting a link between Bonatarsky and the expansion of the, the Big Bang. Way tiny, tiny subatomic particles can collide at high energies and turn into more particles than we began with. Oh, interesting. Hold on, I'm getting a call. Got it, I'll be there. We are finite creatures. Our lives are small and can only scientifically consider a small part of reality. What's common for us is- We are creatures of the universe. If we're finite, the universe is finite with us. It is right there with us, universe. The universe just dapped itself up just now. That's what just happened. Just a sliver of what's available. We can only see so much of the electromagnetic spectrum. We can only delve so deep into extensions of space. Common sense applies to that which we can access. Mm. But common sense is just that, common. If total sense is what we want, we should be prepared to accept that we shouldn't call infinity weird or strange. Mm. The results we've arrived at by accepting it are valid, true within the system we use to understand, measure, predict, and order the universe. Perhaps the system still needs perfecting. But at the end of the day, History continues to show us that the- Or maybe we need multiple systems. You ever think about that? Maybe we need multiple different sets of axioms to then branch math off of. Universe isn't strange. We are. And as always, always. Thanks, thanks for watching. And he's gonna promote some book or something. Ooh, that deep mind. Wait, when was this? Was DeepMind out when this was a... Ah, 2015, okay, 2015. I don't think, was DeepMind out in 2015? This is something else. It's not exactly how DeepMind looks today, but it looks like a precursor to it. I would have loved in this video if he had talked about a lot about fractals, because this relates a lot with fractals. Leonard Wapner's The Pea and the Sun. This book is fantastic and it's full of a lot of the preliminaries mm. needed to understand the proof that comes later. He also talks a lot about- the You see, uh, people much smarter than me have written whole ass books on just the preliminaries to understand it. So in my mind, this paradox is wrong because you're taking the uncountable and applying it on a one-to-one -one set with a countable infinity, which doesn't make sense to me, but I trust that these people know what the fuck they're doing and that I'm wrong. Oh yeah, uh, Deep Dream, that's what it is. It's Google Deep Dream. What did I say earlier? That's what it is, it's not Deep Blue or whatever, it's Deep Dream. How many kinds of infinity are there? Mm. Vi Heart's an okay YouTuber. She's not, she's, she doesn't like Pi Day. So it's like, I don't know, but she's all right. Uh, yeah, no, there is a lot more in, in the Bonatarsky paradox that I'm not trying to, I trust them. I trust them. They got it right. Wait, sign into CERN? I didn't know you could just like make a CERN account. You know what I think would be a fun way to go? You know, remember that guy who put his head in the particle accelerator and nothing happened to him? I wish something, I mean, I don't wish any, you know, but uh, I feel like if, if something did happen, then it would be proof that it's like a crazy thing that it, like if his head gets blown off or whatever, then I'd be like, hey, that's such a cool way to go. Like. If I were to kill myself, I'm not saying I don't want to kill myself, but I'm saying if I were, that would be how I'd want to go. I'd want to jump into a particle accelerator and have it shoot at me. That's how, that'd be the ultimate way to go, honestly. Either that or killing myself on the moon, being the first person in the world to do that. I'm not like suicidal or anything, but you either kill yourself or you get killed. You get killed by nature, you get, that's, those are your only two options. I'd rather go on my own accord. That's all I'm saying. Honestly, I'm not, it seems, it sounds, it looks interesting and it's exciting. And if I was 12 years old, I would go through this page 
extensively, but I'm not. Yanofsky's The Outer Limits of Reason is great. This is the favorite book of mine that I've read this entire year. That sounds like a good book. E. Brian Davies, Why Beliefs Matter. This is actually Corn's favorite book as you might be able to see there. Hold on, hold on. Why Beliefs Matter book. I actually want to write that down. Kevin's got a great short film about putting things out on the internet and having people react to them. There's a rumor that Jake Roper might be- Oh, that's what I'm doing right now. That's a good idea for a video. Good idea for a thumbnail, good idea for a video. That's gonna get some good views. That was a good video. That was a- I can't watch these kinds of videos anymore, these kinds of math videos. I get sick of them really, really quickly nowadays. When I was little, I used to be able to watch a ton of them back to back to back every day. But um, now it's like, I need a break. Like next next math video I can watch, I, gotta, I need at least like a three day, three day to a week cool down, you know? But it's nice to, it's nice to go back and be like, damn, my, the thing I was interested in as a kid, like I still, I still got a little bit of it, you know? And also this one in particular was, it's fun because it's childish. It's a childish theory. If you, if you think about it, the, the Bonatarsky paradox is like that game you play as a kid where you're like a million, a billion, a trillion, whatever, and then eventually you get to infinity and then you're like infinity plus one and then the other guy's like infinity plus infinity and you're like infinity times infinity. It's, it's like that, except if that actually meant something, <laughs> that's what it is. But yeah, I don't like the whole, oh, we, we need the, thing to shift this way and then it's like bro it's very simple okay you take the amount of uncountable points that are in between zero and one on the number line and you stretch it out zero to two is that the same amount of points yes uncountable infinity it's not a number it's it's an infinity it can't even be counted so there you go one is two and you can expand it and contract it and make it really small you can make it really big you can take a P and turn it into the sun. Simple. That part is still slightly unintuitive for me, but math is all about throwing common sense out the window. Like, fuck common sense. Let's just have fun, you know? Let's just push our brains to our limits. See, this is what's tricky. This is what's tricky because to a certain extent, you can kind of say points are like pieces. You can because a circle is a finite shape, but in other concepts like Hilbert's hotel, right? An infinitely long hotel. It's not a shape that's defined in, in, a, in a finite space. And so points and pieces can be the same thing. They can be guests in the hotel. And so with accountable infinity, you can do this. You can say over the intercom, all right, everyone in, in the hotel, everyone in an odd number, leave your room and come outside and you will all be placed in another hotel, in the hotel we just built next to it. And everyone in an even number, divide your current room number by two, and then every, everybody in the odd number will leave, everybody in the even numbers will shift, and you will have created two identically sized and filled up infinitely long, countably infinite Hilbert hotels. Countable infinity can create another countable infinity within itself. In fact, that's like the nature, that's how you kind, kind of how you define infinity. That's like the defining factor of it. These videos are not, are not like um, trying to go like, oh, so you understand infinity, Here's a cool little concept that infinity can do. These videos are like, you don't understand infinity. Here's actually how it works. Look at this, bro. This is fucking hilarious. You gotta see this. If you smack two heavy metal balls together, the energy of their collision will be focused at such a small point, enough heat can be produced to literally burn a hole through paper. Try this at home. It smells like smoke, but let's make it even hotter. First, I'll need to rust up one of these balls. A bowl of water should do the trick. 10 days later, that's a rusty meatball. We'll wrap the other ball in aluminum foil, turn down the lights, put on some ear and eye protection, and start whacking until this happens. Did you see that? That is molten slag at more than 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that didn't happen because I'm so strong, even though I am, <laughs> because the colliding balls produced the ignition temperature. <laughs> I love how we stopped the music for it. Hey bro, Vsauce, Vsauce, you're a fucking role model, dude. I look up to you. It's filthy Frank, motherfucker. It's filthy Frank, bitch. Let's get some pussy tonight. We have to provide food and shelter for the homeless and oppose racial discrimination and promote civil rights while also promoting equal rights for women. This is called what? That's just avocado toast. Like this is called what? Turkey sausage. This is called what? Turkey sausage. And this is called what? And what is this? Those are pickled banana peppers. And what is this? Berries and seeds. 
Perhaps, what is this? 